Welcome back to Disciple Science. I'm Dale Gentry. We have an important job for you today related to this video, so make sure you watch to the end and we'll talk about it there. On the first pages of the Bible, we find humans in the Garden of Eden with a divine assignment to tend and watch over, to rule and subdue all God created. Today, this is commonly referred to as the stewardship of creation. Despite God's plan to partner with humans to accomplish his goals, these instructions are not always taken seriously by modern Christians. Polling data suggests that Christians, especially white evangelical Christians, are among the least environmentally conscious social groups in the United States. So why do so many Christians disregard God's call to look over the earth? And is there anything we can do to reverse that trend? Management and business guru W. Edwards Deming had a saying, the systems you are using are perfectly designed to produce the results you are getting. That is to say, if you don't like your outcomes, consider re-examining your inputs, which is why many have begun to question the systems that we have used to teach about God's directive to tend and watch over creation, because it's not reaching our hearts or changing our behavior. Perhaps we need a new approach to reframe the message. There is precedent for reframing scripture in the face of confusion. Jesus, for example, saw that the Pharisees misunderstood the purpose of some of the laws in the Hebrew scriptures, so he showed us the intent of the law. In Matthew 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, You have heard it said, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Jesus shows us that our hearts should be aligned with our actions, and our actions should resemble his. Before we seek a new message around care of creation, we should start by understanding the old ones. Dominion was the dominant idea guiding the actions of Christians toward creation. It comes from Genesis 1.28, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. The problem is not the word dominion, but our interpretation and application of the term. It's a translation of the Hebrew word rada, which is associated with royalty and is found in the instructions God gives to the Israelite kings throughout the Old Testament. God's vision for those kings was to rule as God does, not to accumulate wealth and power, but to rule for the well-being of those under their care, just like Jesus demonstrated during his life. But many didn't see it that way. Instead, they equated dominion with domination. For example, influential 17th century Christian scientist and philosopher Francis Bacon saw dominion as humanity's given right and power to use nature for the betterment of our societies, an idea that persists to today. Richard Land, the recent president of the Southern Baptist Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission said, human beings come first in God's created order, and that primacy must be given to human beings and for human betterment. If that means that other parts of nature take a back seat, well, then they take a back seat. This hierarchical approach to dominion permits relabeling the good creation as natural resources, with value based solely on their use to our societies. It sees humans at the top and grants us sovereign kingship and freedom to define good and evil. This perspective is also out of touch with the biblical theme that both creation and humans exist to praise God and reveal God's glory. Why is dominion, then, should lead us to look after humans and creation? But we've created a false dichotomy forcing a choice of one or the other. The shortcomings of our application of dominion led to a new approach, the idea of Christians as stewards. This idea was introduced by the 17th century judge, Matthew Hale, although it didn't come to prominence until the late 1970s. It emphasized that our role was not a place of sovereignty, but of caretakers, or stewards, responsible for creation that ultimately belongs to God. While this clarified ownership, it was problematic for other reasons. 
Christian environmental stewardship teaches human responsibility to act for the environment, subtly implying that we are above and separate from creation. While humans are unique in God's creation, we are not separate from it. We are a part of nature, and we rely on it and on God just as all other living things do. This distinction misses that care of creation and love of neighbor are one and the same. Further, our pulpit metaphors portray stewardship as caring for the castle while the king is away. But this mentality puts God in a distant, heavenly realm while we are here to take care of what God left behind, creating a false sense that God is not present or involved in our lives or the abundance of life for which we're called to care. So environmental stewardship nuances dominion in helpful ways, but it hasn't had its desired effect, changing our hearts and our actions. In fact, there's much evidence that on average, American Christians are less interested in taking care of creation now than they were at the start of the environmental movement decades ago. We'll talk about why that is in a future video. So as we seek after the kingdom of God, and work toward Jesus' ideal of everything in God's world put into proper order, we have an opportunity to reorient our relationship with creation from one that revolves around us to a relationship focused on God. But we need a message that communicates a God-centered vision for dominion and our role in that project. If Jesus were physically with us today, we might hear him say, you have heard it said you are to have dominion over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea and over the land. But I say to you that those who look upon creation with indifference, who have encouraged the system to force a choice between the well-being of humans or creation, who prevent creation from singing God's praises, are not honoring the fullness of my kingdom come. So let us join together in spirit and in peace as we seek to tend to all creation for God's glory rather than our own. Okay, now it's time to get to work. We want your input. How can we more effectively present God's assignment to tend and watch over our neighbors and God's creation? We know a catchy slogan alone isn't gonna solve this problem, but at the same time, we wanna effectively communicate in a way that connects people's hearts with their actions. So what should it be? Stick with stewardship or redefine dominion or emphasize creation care, or maybe we need a new approach. That's where you come in. We want to hear your feedback, your ideas, your suggestions. Put your ideas in the comments section down below and we might use them in a future video. Disciple Science is a crowd-funded nonprofit. We're based here in beautiful and chilly St. Paul, Minnesota. Everything we make is free and it exists to help you connect with God through God's creation. You can support us in lots of different ways. We would love for you to like and comment and subscribe to all of our various social media feeds. You can tell your friends about Disciple Science that they need to hear that they can love science and follow Jesus. And we especially appreciate those of you that have chosen to donate and give to support the young artists that are hard at work producing our next animated video. If you want to join them, you can do so by giving at our website at DiscipleScience.com.